It's about to happen. Elon Musk just announced catching the giant beast Starship by Mechazilla in Flight 5. So how will SpaceX be capturing Starship? Why did Elon decide to catch Starship on Flight 5 rather than another flight? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Surely since the first time Elon Musk announced the plan to catch the Starship rocket with Mechazilla back in 2021, we've all been very curious about when SpaceX could perform this marvel. And when three orbital test launches have already taken place, we still can't have a definite answer to the anticipation of witnessing the scene of the Starship returning to be cradled by the chopstick arm. However, everything gradually became clear and said on April 7th when Elon personally declared to the world, I, I'm pretty confident we will achieve that this year. Accompanied by a simulated video of the mystical return process of the super heavy booster. Just before the catch, the booster descended at a standard angle and then approached the chopstick arm with three magnificent exhaust streams. The landing maneuver was breathtaking. Additionally, Elon Musk also affirmed that there's an 80 to 90% chance of successfully recovering the booster. As for the Stage 2 Starship, reusing it'll take longer. SpaceX needs to achieve at least two consecutive successful landings at a specific point in the ocean before attempting to bring it back to the launch site to avoid creating excessive debris. The reason for this difference is that the upper stage of the Starship must survive after re-entering the fiery Earth's atmosphere. This vehicle was shattered and engulfed in flames when attempting to return to the atmosphere in a test flight back last month. To expedite these plans, SpaceX has accelerated deployment immediately in the upcoming fourth launch, which could happen in May. Although the fourth flight will reflect the trajectory of the third flight, according to Elon, there is a difference. Instead of aiming for a controlled landing into the sea as in the third launch, the key objectives of Flight 4 will see teams try to land Starship on the ocean as if there were a virtual launch tower present there. This makes the Starship rocket appear as if it's landing on solid ground with movement synced up with the motions of the virtual launch tower as if they were about to be caught by the Mechazilla arm even though it's happening right on the water's surface. Wow! Finally, if the rockets can successfully orient themselves, then the next step will be to bring them back to Boca Chica, Texas to be caught by the real launch tower. At this point, we can be certain about the flight where Mechazilla will catch the Starship rocket. In the fourth flight, both stages will undergo a simulated landing with a virtual launch tower. In the fifth flight, the spectacular performance will take place with the return to the ground of the Super Heavy bearing the designation B-12 caught by the launch tower. If all goes according to plan, it won't be until the sixth Starship flight that SpaceX can attempt to catch both stages of the Starship. Now, despite this optimism, it's undeniable that these stakes are very high. If a misstep occurs, significant repairs to the tower are going to be needed. Or, worst case scenario, they got to rebuild the whole thing entirely. On the other hand, SpaceX also doesn't let itself get cornered. They have their own contingency plans in place by building new towers. Two towers will be built in Florida and another in Texas to ensure that testing cadence remains uninterrupted in case of accidents. Ultimately, SpaceX will have uh, four launch towers. This also answers our questions about SpaceX suddenly demolishing the launch pad legs in Florida that we talked about in our previous video. It turns out the destruction was a precursor for them to easily create a massive structure like the one at Starbase that has steel panels and a massive water deluge system or a new flame trend system. What will they do? Well, we can't speculate just yet. Perhaps we'll wait a couple more months, but according to Elon, the launch tower and Starship launch system at this location will be operational around the middle of next year. By the end of 2025, they have to plan to have a total of three Starship launch towers to begin supporting operational launches. It's interesting that Elon also didn't forget to remind us that most of the launches will be happening in Florida. We do the kind of the development launches here, um, test anything new here, build the, build the rockets, and then uh, probably most of the operational launches would be from the Cape. This detail has dispelled all previous speculation about the neglect of the Starship launch tower in Florida. Around the beginning of 2020, Starship's launch tower was initiated for construction in Florida, with the potential to play a bigger role in Starship launch campaigns in the future. However, SpaceX's ops were significantly delayed in the later period, leading all SpaceX enthusiasts to believe that the company had changed its original plans. Now that the rumors have been clarified by Elon, we have even more confidence in the future regular launch site for Starship happening on the Florida coast. Moreover, in recent months, SpaceX has proposed taking over Space Launch Complex 37, SLC 37, at Cape Canaveral. This will be a potential site for another Starship launch tower in Florida, although it's not the launch tower Elon mentioned would be operational by mid-2025.
That's because this launch complex still requires environmental impact assessments to evaluate how Starship's launch and landing activities will be affecting the land, air, and water in the surrounding area. Meanwhile, environmental studies for rocket launch facilities typically take over a year, so it'll be some period of time before any major construction happens to convert SLC-37 for those Starship launches. But why does SpaceX have to quickly carry out all this, especially catching Starship? I think it's somewhat of a rushed push, but nonetheless, SpaceX will have its own missions to consider to meet deadlines according to their plan. He stated that next year, we'll see a spacecraft transferring fuel to another spacecraft, which will be an extremely important milestone in the development process. Without refueling, Starship can't reach the Moon or Mars with any meaningful payload. Moreover, Musk added that to reach the Moon or Mars with a payload of 200 tons, Starship would only need to do five or six refueling maneuvers, a significantly lower number compared with NASA's estimate of 14 refueling flights needed for a lunar ascent with Artemis III. The numbers for NASA may be based on the performance of the current prototype, so they may have to reevaluate with significantly larger scale versions of the Starship prototype. And to achieve all the above goals with as many launches as possible, SpaceX needs to accelerate its production and testing processes. That's why the company is completing its massive Star Factory production facility that plays a crucial role in ensuring both the quantity and quality of rocket hardware. This year, the company plans to produce an additional six Starship vehicles with the existing physical facilities. But production will ramp up significantly when Starship gets online in 2025. This is a factory spanning millions of square meters, designed as an assembly line facility that SpaceX hopes will eventually churn out Starship rockets at the rate of one each week. It'll be quick until Elon's ambition of 1,000 spacecraft is realized. I think we need probably on the order of a thousand ships, and each of those ships would have more payload than the Saturn V and be reusable, Musk said. Moreover, SpaceX is upgrading its massy rocket testing area. Instead of serving as just a cryogenic testing area for all ships and booster rockets and used to assess structural aspects of the test pool, SpaceX has added new functionality to this location. In recent months, Massey's witnessed significant developments to expand its testing capabilities, like installing new methane tanks, pipelines, building fire trenches, too. Ultimately, these developments will enable static fire tests in the future at Massey. This is an advantage of SpaceX. With the rocket production line operating continuously and rocket hardware getting more abundant, the company will have a unified testing process at one location without having to move around to different places. The time and effort for pre-flight tasks are shortened now more than ever. In short, with Elon Musk's broad vision, all preparations are geared towards his grand ambition and plans. There will be many more exciting things to come, and there will also be many more plans that we can't predict on SpaceX's journey to conquer space. So be sure to tune into our news each morning to find out more. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you next time. Bye.